acne breakout after miscarriage. So you've just had a miscarriage and your skin is breaking out in acne. And I'm truly, truly sorry for your loss if that's happened for you, if you've experienced a miscarriage. So let's talk about why this actually happens and what you can actually do about it. And big thank you to a lovely follower on Instagram that recommended this topic today. Um, sometimes when I'm so engrossed in what I do, I actually um, forget what you guys need to know. So um, it's really lovely when you respond back with some um, ideas of what I can speak about in the lives. So hello, I am so thrilled to be here. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Michelle Cook. I'm a hormone and fertility naturopath. I'm a natural fertility educator and I'm a um, naturopathic emotional release practitioner. Sorry about that. Who am I even? <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, so I'm the founder and director of Reproductive Wellness. Um, it's a clinic located in Melbourne and I see clients or patients online and face to face. So if you have any questions or comments as we go through the live today, please pop them in the chat box down below and hit the likes and love so that I know that you're enjoying the content. So let's just give a little bit of background information just to begin with. So let's speak about, whoops, let's speak about pregnancy hormones, okay? So let's do a little bit of a backtrack first before we discuss why um, acne actually takes place after miscarriage. So pregnancy hormones. So during the time from conception and through your pregnancy, HCG or human chorionic gonadotrophin continues to rise, which is a hormone produced by the placenta. Furthermore, your hormones change as well. So estrogen and progesterone both rise um, during that time as well. And the estrogen increase will improve the formation of healthy blood vessels in the placenta and the uterus. It will transfer nutrients to the developing baby. It will assist with the development and maturation of the fetus as well. The progesterone increase will actually increase the size of the uterus to accommodate a full term baby. So it needs to grow in size and it helps to loosen ligaments in the body um, as the body changes when we go through pregnancy. So it's important to, um, to keep it limbered up as such. And progesterone is essentially good for establishment of that pregnancy as well. Um, so we are doing a little bit of a backtrack just so it can make sense for you as we go through. So pregnancy hormones and miscarriage. So when you experience miscarriage, both the estrogen and progesterone will drop quite quickly, but it does depend sort of how many weeks pregnant you are um, and when the loss occurs as to how quick that drop is. Um, so the HCG um, will slowly drop to zero over the next few weeks. And again, that's dependent upon sort of how many weeks you're actually pregnant during that loss. So you're probably wondering then, why is there acne after miscarriage? So it is due to the change in hormones. So there's a drop in estrogen and progesterone. And ultimately it is hormonal acne that you're experiencing. So estrogen's role for the skin, we need to remember that it supports a healthy skin barrier. It's important for hydration and elasticity, and it generally assists with being acne free as well. So it's a really important hormone um, to help um, with that skin integrity. Now progesterone's role for the skin. So it inhibits the enzyme 5 alpha reductase, which will reduce the male type hormones, so the androgens, so things like DHT or dihydrotestosterone. And this means that you'll have fewer outbreaks and less sebum. So sebum is an oil that is secreted by the skin 
um, and it's produced to hydrate and protect your skin. But too much of this oil or sebum can contribute to acne. If your progesterone is low, it can be difficult for your thyroid to do its normal job, okay? Because all the glands and hormones interact with each other. So we need to remember that if there's a drop or um, rise in um, ovarian hormones, this can affect your thyroid function as well. They all sort of interact with each other. So if your thyroid is underfunctioning, so if it's hypothyroid, so it's underfunctioning, this can contribute to acne as well. And one of the reasons is that it impacts your insulin levels. So again, you can see that there's an interplay between the ovaries, the thyroid and your pancreas because your pancreas is what secretes insulin. So if the insulin levels are tampered with, this affects DHT production leading to oily skin so more of that sebum is being produced and um, it leads to an, an androgen induced acne so that's like your male type hormones okay so estrogen on the other hand is important in maintaining your blood glucose levels and your insulin so insulin is a hormone that manages glucose levels in the body it essentially gives it a little piggyback into your cells where it's required. But if your estrogen is actually low, glucose will increase. And when glucose is too high, insulin will take a back seat in managing glucose. It's all too hard. It gets overwhelmed with the amount of glucose that's in the blood. Um, and it leads to increased glucose and something called insulin resistance which just means that your insulin goes on strike because there's just too much glucose to deal with. So this means that your glucose and your insulin are both going to be high and this will increase inflammation. Now remember when you increase inflammation in the body, that's going to cause hormone imbalance as well. So this will increase um, inflammation of the skin um, and your androgens as well, so your male type hormones, which will make your skin more oilier and more prone to acne. So you can see how all of this interplay of your hormones is affecting your skin and um, you know it's becoming too oily and it's leading to acne as a result. So it's important to note that stress will contribute to acne as well. So let's face it, going through miscarriage is very stressful, isn't it? Um, it's a big stress for the body emotionally, mentally and physically. And when you're stressed, your body will, will produce a hormone called cortisol. And when cortisol is high, because you're not adapting to that stress, it leads to inflammation around the sebaceous glands in the skin. Um, that's the glands that produce that sebum or the oil to protect, protect and hydrate the skin. Also, high cortisol will increase sebum production. So that's going to lead to clogged pores, and acne breakouts as well. So you can see how it's all interacting and affecting each other there. So for most women, the period generally happens about four to six weeks later, and it can take time for your hormones to actually balance out after your miscarriage. So your periods may be irregular to begin with because there's a bit of an, an adjustment after that's actually happened. So you're probably wondering, well, what do I do then for the treatment of my hormonal acne? So first and foremost, your hormone level, levels need to be looked at to determine exactly what's imbalanced in your particular case or scenario. Because once there's an understanding of the hormones that are imbalanced, then there's particularly herbal medicines and nutritional medicines that can be used to treat those certain hormone imbalances. There's not um, sort of a one herb or one nutrient that is going to fix a hormone imbalance. It depends which ones are high and or low. So a thorough investigation is needed 
So we need to be looking at your lady hormones. We need to be looking at estrogen, progesterone, FSH, LH, and your androgens as well. We need to be looking at vitamin and mineral status. For instance, low zinc can result in acne. Um, we need to remember that zinc is anti-inflammatory, it's antibacterial, it assists the liver with um, liver detoxification as well, and it heals the skin too. Thyroid testing is another important one. And in terms of thyroid testing, I know I mentioned this a bajillion times, but TSH is not enough. And I see this time and time again um, when patients go and see a GP or a specialist and they get TSH done. Now, um, part of that is due to Medicare because um, they won't really allow the doctor to do um, more than TSH unless TSH is totally out of range, which is a really broad um, range. Um, so they won't sort of allow that on the Medicare rebate. But ideally, um, we need more of the story because TSH is just the first part. So TSH will knock on the shoulder of your thyroid gland and tell it to produce your thyroid hormone. So it will tell it to produce T4 and T4 will convert into T3, which is your active thyroid hormone. So we need TSH, T4, T3. We need your thyroid antibodies as well. We need... Um, your iodine as well, which is a urinary test. Um, so that will give us a complete understanding of what's happening with the thyroid. If we just do TSH, that could be within range or it could be normal looking, but your thyroid um, results might be abnormal, but we wouldn't know that because we just had TSH tested. And remember, if your thyroid is askew, that's going to contribute to hormonal acne as well. So it needs to be looked at as well properly. Um, even if you have to pay out of pocket, which is usually the case, um, it is really well worth getting that done because TSH simply isn't enough. Adrenal testing is another one because as I suggested before, um, high cortisol is going to contribute to inflammation, it's going to contribute to acne, etc. as well. So that can e either be through a blood draw. So first thing in the morning, um, you have to sort of go in there not too stressed, otherwise it will make the results look a bit askew. Um, or there's always salivary testing, which will measure your saliva and cortisol levels throughout the whole duration of the day. So we'll measure the, the first measures generally between 6 and 8 a.m. The next one's about 12 p.m. The next one's around 4 p.m. And the last one's around about that sort of 8 to 9 p.m. Um, before you go to bed, just to get an idea of what it's doing um, throughout the day, whether it's high or low at particular points. Um, okay, if there's any questions, by the way, just pop them down as we go through. And I'm happy to answer those for you. So what we will discuss are some things that you can do to support your acne. Keep in mind, however, this is general advice for acne. So it's more a symptomatic approach that I'll be referring to. But it's very, very important that you address what's actually driving that. If you don't address that hormonal imbalance, it won't be um, fixed and it won't improve. And we need to remember that skin is an inside job. So there's something not quite right there, whether it be a hormonal imbalance, which it tends to be, um, or there might also be a vitamin or mineral deficiency as well, contributing to that too. But this is just some general things that you can try in the meantime until you get it properly assessed. So inside support. So one very important thing that you can do is to support your organs of elimination. So your liver and your bowels, because they're very important in the management of hormones. So support your liver. Your liver is involved in detoxifying hormones and improving skin health. So eat things like liver loving foods. So things like spinach, grapefruit, beetroot, green tea, turmeric, lemon juice, garlic, cruciferous vegetables, so things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, things like that. 
and support your bowels. So doing a poo at least once a day is absolutely essential to the management of your hormones and also to improve your skin as well. If you are not going daily, this can lead to reabsorption of those hormones and it can contribute to hormonal imbalance, so not good. Um, so a bit of bowel love, we need to incorporate things like fiber, water and exercise. They're absolutely key and you need to be doing them daily. So fiber is found in things like nuts, vegetables, particularly um, it's found on the skin, um, you know, when you eat the vegetables include that as well. Whole grains such as quinoa and buckwheat, peas, oats, apples, avocado, asparagus, legumes as well, so things like lentils and chickpeas, so things like that. Healthy fats are also very helpful as well, that helps lubricate, um, so that's really important to ease constipation as well. So things like flaxseed oil, so pouring a tablespoon of flaxseed oil onto your, di onto your dinner after it's been cooked or using it um, as a salad dressing. Um, also things like chia pudding, so you can make up a chia pudding, um, you actually get the chia seeds, you soak them in a dairy-free milk overnight and then in the morning you're adding things like berries, LSA which is linseed, sunflower and almond. So you can pop that on the top just to make sure that you're getting your protein intake as well. And supporting your gut health is absolutely paramount to hormone balance as well. So your gut mi microbiota or your good bacteria family is very, very important for managing your hormones, particularly estrogen. There's actually a family of bacteria known as the estrobolome, which is specific for managing estrogen levels and keeping them just right in the body. So to do that, we can use things like probiotic foods or drinks. So things like water kefir, miso, tempeh and kombucha. So all of those are really good. Um, just be mindful if you um, are sort of histamine intolerant or um, don't do well with histamines and things like that. And you have fermented foods and you don't feel so good. So things like kombucha, it's probably best to actually avoid that. I would just stick to the water kefir, um, the miso and things like that instead. Healing foods. So we need to actually heal the gut as well. So things like bone broth is really lovely to heal the gut lining. Um, and it reduces inflammation in the body and it makes it more desirable for the bacteria, so your good bacteria, to flourish there. Um, so it's kind of like a mini interior designer in a way. Um, so that's a nice one to include. So you can either make a homemade bone broth or you can buy them. So there's a few different brands now at health food stores. So there's Best of the Bone, there's um, Longevity X or I think it's Jevity RX actually um, and oh, I've gone blank on the other one but I'll include the names of those in my blog post anyway for you. Sometimes I go blank on the names so apology about that. Now boo to the moo so stop eating cow's dairy because it actually increases the hormone IGF-1, so insulin-like growth factor 1, which is a similar structure to insulin. So if you have high insulin and insulin-like growth factor, this will increase inflammation and it increases that sebum production on the skin, so that oil that's on the skin, which will worsen acne and it will clog your pores. And furthermore, cow's dairy results in further inflammation from the A1 casein protein. Now this is a big protein molecule and it's very difficult for the body to actually digest and break it down. And if it already wasn't bad enough for you, all that information about cow's dairy, it actually increases mTOR. So that's an en enzyme that stimulates keratin, um, sebum production, and inflammation. 
So what I would suggest is actually switching to goats or sheep's products instead um, because they have an A2 casein protein which is easier for your body to digest and it's not actually inflammatory um, for your skin and for your body in general. If you're lactose intolerant though, I would actually suggest avoiding um, goats and sheep's yogurt because they still contain lactose, so you might want to switch to a coconut yogurt instead. Eating protein regularly. So this is very important to balance your insulin levels and your glucose levels, which reduces the possibility of um, a spike in blood sugar levels. Remember, high insulin and high glucose contribute to acne. Now make sure that you eat some form of protein with every single meal, including snacks. So protein would be things like in your main meal, it could be things like fish, chicken, eggs. It could be legumes, so things like balotti beans, chickpeas, lentils. Um, it includes tofu and tempeh as well. Snacks, so things like protein balls nuts and seeds and a protein shake just make sure that's dairy free um, a rice cake with some nut butter on it so almond or cashew butter is a nice option an apple with nut butter on it as well so you're getting your fiber but also you're getting that um, protein hit at the same time now another issue is sweet things so avoiding sugary things so things like cakes lollies soft drinks slices etc and baked goods so avoid things that are made from white flour so this is a refined carbohydrate and it causes a drastic rise in blood sugar levels which remember causes inflammation it contributes to insulin resistance so your insulin doesn't respond to that high glucose and that leads to hormone imbalance inflammation of the skin and acne and the high blood sugar levels and insulin um, as i said um, yeah is really bad because it causes inflammation body-wide including on the skin now external support so this is something you can do in the meantime just to as a sim um, uh, just to treat the symptoms um, but just remember at the end of the day we need to look at you know what's happening um, what's causing it so use a few drops of tea tree directly on the acne so this is antimicrobial it's antibacterial and there's a brand that's specific to acne breakouts called Batani. It's made by a naturopath in Melbourne and they have a cream called Phytoseptic Cream. And that contains golden seal, which is antimicrobial and antibacterial. And you apply it just directly on the acne spots, not entirely on the face, just directly on them. And I would suggest not using cleansers that are gel based because they will tend to strip the skin of the natural oils and it will actually result in further production of sebum because your skin, um, your body would detect that there's not enough oil there and it will produce more, um, which will, um, yeah, it will lead to too much um, sebum production. Using a few drops of jojoba oil, so prior to using your moisturizer would be great because it's antimicrobial. Um, so that would be a nice one to include. Just make sure if you're using an oil on your skin that you do use a moisturizer as well. Um, if you just use an oil, um, it will actually um, contribute to skin dryness. So just make sure that um, you follow up with that moisturizer afterwards as well. So what would I recommend doing if you have acne breakouts after miscarriage? So ultimately, I would recommend actually booking an appointment with a naturopath that specializes in hormones and fertility. And FYI, that's something that I actually do. So naturopaths will actually take a thorough approach to looking at your pathology testing in a very different way to a GP would. Um, so remember the pathology range um, on a blood test um, is very broad and a GP is trained from an emergency room perspective. So if you're well out of that broad range, that's when they'll actually treat you because they treat disease and symptoms. 
So they'll treat you when the wheels have completely fall, fallen off the wagon and that's just how they're trained. But a naturopath will actually look at your results and look at the optimal range. So there'll be a smaller range within that broad range and we want to kind of aim for you to be within that range. Um, so if you fall outside of that or if you're at the higher end of that range, that's not ideal. Um, so we actually address it before it becomes a huge problem. However, um, most of the time you will actually not feel great and you'll experience symptoms before you actually, before the wheels fall, fall off the wagon. During that time from the optimum range to that broad range, you will not feel very good anyway. So it's important to actually get onto things and actually get it addressed. Um, and, you know, the thing to remember is at the end of the day, normal test results won't help you. So if you've been to the GP, they've looked at your test results and then slid it across the table and told you everything's fine, you're normal. That's not going to help you because you're experiencing this acne. There's obviously a reason that it's actually happening. So it's very important then to take those results to a naturopath to look at it very differently so that that can be addressed for you. Now, let me just see if I've covered everything. Yeah, and as I was mentioning too, so naturopaths actually will look at nutrient levels as well. So things like vitamin levels and mineral levels um, will look at your hormones. So all the things that I discussed getting looked at, that's what we look, look at. So it's very thorough. And then treatment involves herbal medicine, nutritional medicine, diet and lifestyle advice as well, which are extremely important. But also another thing that I actually do is emotional support, which is extremely important in terms of skin. Um, there are a lot of underlying emotions and stress when it comes to that. And there's certainly a lot when it comes to miscarriage as well. So I use a technique called naturopathic emotional release, which um, actually uncovers those underlying emotions and stress and clears them off for you so that you can actually heal and move on. So if you actually need some help with this and um, you know you're suffering with this acne after miscarriage and you would like to get your body um, you know back to how it was prior to miscarriage and get rid of the acne etc I would absolutely love to help you. So make sure you book an appointment. It's um, a 15 minute free discovery call um, and we can actually have a chat so that you can um, ask me questions about what's involved with the treatment and to see if we're actually a good fit as well. So that would be a good starting point so you can actually book that in yourself online. Um, I'll pop the link for you if you're watching on Facebook underneath in the comments and if you're watching on YouTube I'll pop the link down there for you. If you're watching on Instagram, the link is in my bio, so you can go ahead and do that. And is there any questions before I finalise up today? I'll just check Facebook as well. Nothing so far. Um, so if you think of something and you're a bit shy, you can always pop it in the comments box after the live, or you can send me a PM or a DM, and I'm more than happy to answer that for you. And I would like to thank you so very much for watching me. Um, and if you're watching on my YouTube channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, just so you know as well, all these um, lives that I've been doing every week are up on my website blog as well. So if you're more of a visual person and you like to see the video plus all the written um, text as well, I've got that all on my blog. So that's reproductivewellness.com au slash blog so they'll all be on there and they're all on youtube as well so i'm here live every wednesday 7 30 p.m australian eastern standard time talking about something related to hormones menstrual cycles periods or fertility so i look forward to seeing you next wednesday um, next wednesday will probably be the last one of the year i might um, very well upload to um, videos kind of just uploaded but not live 
um, but I think that's a little bit ambitious. So I think next week will be the final one of the year. So make sure that you join me. And it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you this evening. I hope you have a great evening. Bye.